Welcome to another exciting episode of Muscle Serpents University. I'm your host, Dave Palumbo, and I'm here with my co-host, Vin Russo, the author of The Complete Boa Constrictor. Vin, today we're going to be talking about blood boas. This is an exciting, I guess you could say, segment of the boa constrictor population. You happen to be one of the, the foremost authorities and, I guess, breeders in this sense. Uh, explain to us what a blood boa is exactly. A blood boa is a red boa, obviously. The blood is the, the red part. Um, the history of them are that they originated from a single snake that came out of El Salvador. back in One the, snake? One snake, back in the mid-90s, um, early to mid-90s. A man named Ron St. Pierre, um, from what I heard, uh, either traveled to El Salvador a few times or had family there and got a hold of what he saw as a very red snake and he uh, exported it back to the United States. Um, bred it, pr saw that the original offspring were normals, and then bred them back to the original blood boa and proved that it was an, an inheritable trait. It a was recessive. A recessive trait. Mm -hmm. um, so he was the first guy to do it. And um, back then, they were really expensive. I remember the first time seeing one for sale, they were like $10,000. $10,000, yeah, wow. And, and it was... When did you buy one? At uh, what point, What <laughs> price point did you get? I got them sometime in the late 90s when they were down to about 2500 Wow. So um, I did pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, and I started with a, a, a nice male uh, blood boa. Does it surprise you being an expert in locality boas that, that something like this would randomly pop up, like a blood boa, you know, or an all red boa? And no. how red was the original? The original one was, was red. I mean, it was similar to this normal looking one that we have here, maybe a little redder than this. Mm -hmm. Um, this is a regular This is just a, a straight blood up boa. Uh, yeah. yeah, straight up Nothing blood else boa. In it. If you want, we can maybe show it. Um. Yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. So, uh, again, for, for a, a normal snake, that's pretty red, okay. you know, especially coming out of the wild. Right. So someone would have to have a good eye to spot so somebody, this. Snake. Yeah, somebody obviously like Ron St. Pierre spotted it and said, there's something different about this snake. Mm -hmm. And luckily, it proved to be a, a recessive gene, a recessive trait. Now, when you got the first blood boa, you had to say to yourself, well, what am I going to mix this with to enhance it, number one, and to, to reproduce it? What, what, did, what was the first snake you bred it to, and, and why did you pick that particular snake? Um, the first things I bred them to were um, um, Central American boas, like Nicaraguan boas, things that were small and colorful. I wanted to keep the size small. Mm. Uh, now, I couldn't get another El Salvador boa. Why the, is that? Because the snakes don't really come out of El Salvador. Oh, it's as restricted. As far as mm -hmm. yeah. So um, I couldn't get a, another El Salvadorian boa. So what I did was I bred it to a, a Nicaraguan boa. Which, which is, is close. Which is close enough, yeah. And it was sm a smaller race mm. of snake obviously right um then i eventually bred them into what's called um orange tail boas or hypo orange hypo. tail boas. before we get to that now the original snake that you bred how big did the babies get when they grew up were they was it a did it stay small they were small and what is small for people who don't small know? is uh about four to five foot adult is okay. small whereas opposed to an eight to ten foot well you know, colombian, uh, colombian uh, ten is is, is big. really big I've, yeah. I've seen i've rarely seen ten foot colombians mm -hmm. maybe an eight footer is, is okay. big. but there could be double the size but they're considering a colombian they're a lot thicker Mm. Colombians. These are a more smaller, leaner snake. And they can probably survive in what, a V70 tub its whole life? I breed them in V70s, yeah. And that's very convenient, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you took these, these offspring and you said, all right, how can I color these things up a little bit? I'm going to breed them into the hypo. Gene right, part. I bred a blood into a, an orange tail hypo eventually. And that's what you got, right? And, that, and I ended up getting, um, through the second generation, I ended up getting... Um, hypo bloods which really really colored up the now why do you think these got lighter because the brownish tinge in the original blood just was made well the hypo washes orange. out that the black hypo melanistic means lacking or less black so we're dealing with less black and through lime breeding and through selective breeding mm -hmm. i've gotten it to the point where um i'm getting snakes that have a lot of red in them mm -hmm. now this snake seems to be very almost patternless a little bit if we can get a zoom yes on um I've also had a few um, aberrant, um, aberrant looking. Um, Is this just random? This came up, or this didn't come up randomly. The the parents had striping in the tails, mm -hmm. um, and they were hypos that were head for blood. And when I bred the striped tailed snakes to each other, I popped up a few of these. Wow! So um, 
the the pattern list or you know lack of pattern. Or if you striping. look at if you look at the comparison between the regular blood to the hypo pattern list, I mean it's it's so dramatic, and right, that's right. That's just just the hypo gene in there, really. Right. This is and this may may be a super hypo. It's hard to tell. Now um, you did make super hypos eventually, which are the you know right. homozygous form. How do you know that this is a super hypo? How could you tell as being an expert? Looking at it, it it's a lot lighter. It doesn't have the, the darker rings in the tail. Mm -hmm. um, it's a, a pretty light snake. The bellies are, are almost a clear a clear red. I mean, this is about as red as you get in, yeah. a, in, in, a, in a boa yeah. constrictor. I mean, these are, this is, to me, this is the elite in boas right here because it's a small snake. It mm. doesn't get giant. It's red. People love red snakes. Why is that? Um, I don't know. People like parrots. They love red. Yeah. They love color. Now, when this gets older, it will get a little more burnt looking, right? Uh, believe it or not, the hypos stay really orange they do. and red. They really do. So yeah. This is a very desirable snake. How much does something like this go for now in the marketplace? Um, um, a straight up hypo blood would maybe be about $1,000. And something like this, which is a, a super hypo blood, could be fifteen to 2000 or even okay. more. All right. So it's not, it's not cost prohibitive, but it's... Not, you yeah, there's just not a lot of them yet. Right. You know. Now, when you produce this, being the, the boa constrictor breeder that you are, and being the creative and guy you are, you say to yourself, "How can I make this better?" And you decide, "I'm going to breed it into a albino line to try to make an albino." Right. You know. Which I boa. I did too, but I didn't right. add the hypo into the albino part. You I, did. Uh, originally, I did a blood to an albino. Now, how come you didn't do the, the hypo album um, to a blood? Because at the time, this was uh, about eight years ago or more, um, I didn't have a, a hypo um, gotcha. albino, a sun glow, I should right, say. Right. So I bred the, a blood boa to an albino boa. Now, why would you breed it to a, a sun glow? You could have done that, right? Right. I didn't have one. Oh, okay. okay there you go. <laughs> now, here's, here's a funny question because you're a locality guy, and I know you, you, you wanted to breed these to be small. Were you worried? And have you noticed that the albino version of the blood bow, which you're calling the red dragon, right. and maybe uh, we can get a picture of that up there, um, that would be bigger because of that? That was that was definitely a concern. So what I had done was um, I bred it to an albino. A call albino. A call albino that was not a giant monster. It was a snake that was genetically a little smaller. It mm -hmm. just didn't get giant. There it is. Yeah. And... Um, and then, I, I've, obviously, I was concerned about the size, so um, I, I bred them back. The, the hets, I bred back into bloods to try and strengthen them that way, too. So oh, wow. I did a, a two-step uh, Takes a lot, much longer yeah, time. Yeah, it took a little long. But I did make um, blood boas from the original hats. Now I did, what I've done with them is I bred those blood bo those I should say I made red dragons, albino blood boas from the original double hats. And I bred them back to my nice, smaller Central American. So I'm going to try and get the, the size down. Mm. Even though they didn't become monsters, they were a little bigger. Right. The double hats were a little bigger than, say, a normal Central American. How many red dragons are actually in existence in your I, collection? I really don't know. I don't know the exact number mm -hmm. um, that's in existence. Yeah. Um, I have an undisclosed amount of. Them. Oh, you, oh, you're not re <laughs> revealing that, I see. <laughs> um, but there's a there's a few of them out there now. Um, the first year I did it uh, was 2011. I think I made the first one, and and um, a few people. Uh, I obviously advertise it, and a few people were like, "Wow, I, I think I should do that too." Have you sold any of those? Uh, I have not sold any of the mm -hmm. red dragons themselves. Well, this no. year, will you sell them? I might sell, you know, a few of them. This they have year. to be very expensive, I would assume. Yeah, they will be up there. I think they'll be upwards of um, eight to ten thousand okay. dollars. But that's a, a rare, rare snake in in today's market, at least. Yes, yes. Where do you go from there? Where do you go from the red dragon? Well, uh, I know a few guys have made the the hypo um, red dragon. Right. Um, I don't know what they're calling them. Um, those look really nice too. They're a little more faded than the original, you know, what I would call red dragon, because the hypo part kind of dilutes fades it. out or dilutes the, the, the red and makes it a little more orange. So I haven't gone that route yet. I, I probably will eventually. But I, I tend to like the straight-up red dragon mm. best because it's a very red snake. Um, but as far as improving on that, I think we've 
we've uh, no I, I don't believe the it. there's no other <laughs> you know locality bow that you might want to get in there you know get a little bit of uh, um, more coloration in there no the only other thing I can think of is maybe um, adding a red dragon maybe into a T positive um, oh that might be type interesting of thing yeah what would um, that look like or maybe even taking a red dragon and breeding it to an albino blood and making an albino blood red dragon leopard <laughs> a leopard, putting yeah, a leopard, leopard in there. Okay, yeah, a leopard, leopard albino in there. Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah, because that's also a small snake. So if, yeah, if I can do a leopard albino blood, that that would look nice. Right. I'll now, try that eventually. If people want to purchase any of these snakes from you, where's the best way to just go check it to out? Um, cuttingedgechirp.com or um, facebook.com forward slash cuttingedgechirp. I noticed you've been becoming a, a Facebook fanatic lately. I, I like it. It's very easy. Yeah. It's quick and easy, and I can put a picture out of, right from my phone. Click, put it on, and I'm done. With my website, I've got to upload a picture on yeah. my computer, yeah. um, put it on, Too much re work, resize dude. it, put it on oh the, my God, the website, forbid, right? right? Well, there you have it. Blood bow is for you. we got them in, in regular form, hypo form, super hypo, and the red dragon, which is the... the uh, where'd you get the name red dragon from? Well, uh, I'm, I'm into uh, Japanese art. In, uh, I thought it was Game of Thrones, no? No, <laughs> I'm into Japanese art, and in Japan... The Red Dragon uh, is the name of a, a few um, um, color morph things like fish. They use it in sure. discus fish and, and stuff and like that. Arowana, and, and the dragon is obviously uh, in, in Japanese culture is, is uh, you know, very revered. So I, I, I came up with the name just from, from that. I got to get a Red Dragon now. I'm sold <laughs> on it. <laughs> For now that we're out of time, I'm Dave Palumbo with Vin Russo from Muscle University.